Record on the podcast. And why is there such a delay? What's going on, YouTube? There we go. And we're live. What's up, everybody? Cool, cool. Thanks for waiting in there while we get things started. You know, technology, we got to wait on it. It's not... Not autonomous yet. Elon Musk is he's working on it. Soon we're not gonna have to push any, any buttons. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're great start. Uh, am I recording? Yes I am. Check, 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 check. Alright, let's do this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Nobody's here yet. Where's everybody at? I'm ready. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> I will take a drink in a sec. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's going on? Episode 99, I'm extra excited because guess what? It is March. March is finally here, everybody. Woo! I hope, I pray, fingers crossed. March Madness. No more March Sadness. Come on. Not again. We can't do it again. Please let everything go on safely and securely. It is March 5th on the podcast. I wanted to record on March 1st, but if you're watching live on YouTube or Instagram, you see my shirt. I've been waiting for this to come in the mail until I recorded. Been meaning to buy this for like years now. Finally pulled the trigger. We sleep in May. John Rothstein, give you credit for it. Shout out to you. We sleep in May. Looks great. Let me pull up the video. You can kind of see me. We sleep in May. It's flipped here, actually. I think it's backwards on the Instagram live. So it's peels, ew, yam, ni. <laughs> but we sleep in May, everybody. If you don't know what that means, it's... You know, November, December, January, February, March. It's a busy time. Best time of the year, March. April. Even have the national championship, Final Four usually. So we sleep in May. Season's finally over. College basketball. And obviously, like always, we'll get into all of that. But off the top, I have quite a bit of news here. It's been a little over a week since we did the last pod. Obviously, like I'm saying, I want to do it on Monday. Here we are on Friday because I was waiting for this t-shirt and for other other things. So, here we are. Let's start off with a shot. <laughs> if you haven't watched, we've been recently doing this. Uh, on days when I can join you and drink, I will. Uh, I still got to go to work today, so I will not. I have some coffee, though, that I'll drink here. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, crack open a, a beer or a nice drink. If you're driving and you're listening to the podcast, probably wouldn't recommend it. Maybe like a Red Bull or something. Uh, but anyway, if I make it, what are the rules? I forget. Uh, if I make it, you all drink. And if I miss, I drink. I mean, it's the drinking version. But, you know, I've actually made it twice live on air. I never thought I'd honestly make it ever. Uh, so I was just going to make it a rule. Just everybody drinks because I'm always going to miss. But here we go. Oh, that's all good. Tried to get the rebound. All right. Can't win them all. So I, I drink because I missed. Cheers, everybody. Uh, some good coffee. If anybody wants to wants me to sponsor their coffee company, let me know. <laughs> you know where to find me. Slide in those DMs. Busy place though. Since I got that check, those DMs. <laughs> I wish. All right. Woo! Who, who's 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 ready? Happy Friday, everybody! All right. Episode ninety nine. That's a big one. And speaking of ninety nine, we have some news. If you see the shirt in the background here on the live YouTube, it's a hint for you. All right, first off, we'll start with some NFL news because we all know that 
that drives the ratings, as we say. That's why ESPN talks about the NFL all year long. J.J. Watt, I thought it was kind of cool He uh, that he announced things himself. He posted on Twitter a picture of himself in an Arizona Cardinals shirt, squatting who knows how much weight because he's huge. Um, but he just said, source me. So he even beat, man, he beat Chef. Like, even Chef, you can't, you can't beat the source when the source is the source. Like, that's as, like, personal as you can get. When a player announces something, that's straight from the source. <laughs> so that was cool. Everybody kind of thought that was unique. I don't know. That's the time and days we live in now. Um, check your Twitter feeds, people. Follow your favorite athletes if you want to know what's going on. Obviously, I mean, moments later, everybody was reporting it everywhere because it blew up instantly, but... Yeah, I don't know. My only take on that is like, yeah, the NFC West wasn't good enough. We need to make the NFC West better. <laughs> Said no one ever. Like, why? Why Why does my favorite team have to always be in the hardest con Baylor's in the Big 12. Arguably, I'm going to argue that that's the best bas conference in basketball. NFC West was arguably the best. I mean, dude, <laughs> can't catch a break. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I don't know why. I just like look out the window at a bird and <laughs> that's, that's what distracted me. Wow. Okay. It's going to be one of those days, huh? <clears throat> we sleep in May. I love this shirt. I usually don't have the video pulled up the whole time when I'm recording, but I have it right now. I'm looking at it. It looks nice. Nice shirt. It's comfy too. Anybody, if you want to go to, uh, what is it? Collegehoopstoday.com. <clears throat> Am I plugging that right? John Rothstein, you want to go buy one? Yeah, he has great sh If fans of any team, you can buy. He has a slogan, essentially, for every team. If he doesn't have a slogan for your team, it probably means your team is not very good. <laughs> uh, so um, I apologize if he doesn't have a slogan for your team. But essentially, every, every team that has a big following in college basketball has their own T-shirt. Um, I, I did. I did buy Baylor's t-shirt as well. I don't have it presented today yet. Um, one day. Big 12 champs wasn't, you know, doesn't move the needle when, when you, when you have, it's just one check, man. It's one goal. It's not the ultimate goal. We're going to try to get there though. Scott Drew's going to be, he's trying. He said he's going to try his best. I believe I believe uh, Gary Parish quoted that Scott Drew is going to try his best to make the Final Four. I think that's on the record. So I agree. I hope he can. I hope he does. I hope he does try his best. I, I hope we all do. <clears throat> uh, he would be the first since Bill Henderson in 1950 to get Baylor to a Final Four. My parents weren't even alive in 1950. That's, that's a long time. Speaking of, that's the last time Baylor won the Big 12 championship. No, that's a conference championship. They've never won a Big 12 championship. So, 1950, 71 years since they won any form of a conference championship. It's crazy. That was out of turn, but that's what happens. Um, the other news I had off the top here, uh, obviously the J.J. Watt news was big. Some uh, Joel Embiid taking like, the NBA world by storm. Just a few weeks ago, I think the conversation was LeBron and Jokic for MVP. Now it seems everybody thinks it's Joel Embiid. I don't disagree. It, he's playing fantastically right now. We'll see. We're not even halfway through the season. But yeah, I mean, the Sixers and him are looking great. So that's your NBA <laughs> update. NHL's moving along. NBA and NHL, they're just moving along, man. It just feels like they were just playing a few months ago because they were. And they were just, we're just trekking along. Just. Games get canceled. Nobody even blinks anymore. It's just like, okay, we won't play for a couple days. We'll play tomorrow. It's just, all right, is there a hockey game today? Yeah, oh, no, it got canceled. Oh, okay, that's normal. Is there a basketball game? Oh, no, yeah, there was 10 minutes ago, but not anymore. <laughs> so we'll just uh, we'll just see what happens there, I guess. Big 12 chance, baby. <laughs> um, so... 
So yeah, that's that's the NBA NHL update. Did quick today because you know, there's a lot of other stuff to get to. Spring training is going on in the MLB. That's wild. I, I don't know why, but that just feels like it's too soon for that. Too. I don't know. It's just we we went from having nothing to now it's March Madness, NBA, NHL, spring training. Like what? When did when did this happen? <laughs> what? When did I wake up and everything's going on all of a sudden? It's it's wild to me, uh, but hey, <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's crazy. It's literally like flip a switch, and now there's just all the sports. It's great. It's <laughs> it's wild. Um, I don't know. I didn't really give an NHL update. I guess I should. I didn't pull up the the NBA. The only thing I had was the Joel Embiid stuff. Uh, Lightning's win the Central. Like I always say, if you don't know, know by now that the conferences are different in the NHL this year. You obviously don't care, so skip along to the next uh, topic. Capitals. Getting that one in the East. In the North, we got the Maple Leafs. And in the West, the Knights. Those are your those are your leaders in the NHL. So that's where we'll, we'll, we'll leave you there today. Like I said, we got other other stuff to get to here. So the spring training news, that was pretty much my uh, off-the-top news. Now we'll get into some Premier Lacrosse League news. Premier Lacrosse League. If you don't know, big fan. Shirts in the background. I uh, Huge, huge, huge news all around. The PLL, they're just great at this. They just love releasing news. It's fantastic. I'm not even being sarcastic. It just seems like every week they like have some breaking news. It's good. Drives the drives the needle. So, so that was all the news off the top, and uh, we'll get into some Premier Lacrosse talk here. As Peacock now is going to be the official streaming service of the Premier Lacrosse League. Peacock, if you don't know, is NBA is NBC's. Streaming platform now. It seems like everybody has their own. You got Disney Plus. You got you know, what Paramount just released yesterday. Uh, so if if you want another streaming network, because there wasn't enough, Peacock has all your. I think Office fans probably have Peacock. I feel like that's like the big pull for any NBC shows apparently. So I guess I don't know if NBC Sports Gold is now no longer going to be a thing. But they're moving the Premier Lacrosse League over to Peacock. I would assume they're moving the whole platform over to Peacock. Makes sense. You want all your stuff in one spot. I got the streaming platforms drive me crazy. But I mean, you can how many like how many subscriptions can you have? It's I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get Peacock though for I mean I just canceled the NFL Red Zone. I didn't realize I've been paying for that for two months. And there's no who. That should cancel automatically. That's so messed up that they do that to people. I even tweeted it. I was like, just a friendly reminder for everybody, go cancel your NFL Red Zone subscription because we don't need it for five more months. I don't know why. They're sneaky, man. Those big companies. Don't get me started. Uh, so, yeah. So, the PL also announcing their, their protected rosters here. Um, I'm not going to go through all the protected rosters, obviously. Um if you if you so choose, you can you can look that up yourself. But I do have some some big trade news I wanted to get to with the biggest names in the sport. Connor Fields was in a trade. He's going to the Archers now, and I find it hard to believe to we'll find a better offense than the Archers now. I I don't <laughs> Nick Duke better than better. We'll get we'll we'll get to we'll get to the college basketball here in a minute. Um, so. Connor Fields going to the Archers. That uh, that attack is going to be. I mean, that's just. There's so many weapons there. I don't even know how they're going to do it. It's great. It's good. That's. I feel like they, they got a, a great trade. And then Archers send in uh, Ian McKay to, to, to the chaos to Chouse, as we all like to say. If we don't like to say it, that's so. I can see. I'm not. Whatever. <laughs> Chouse. Uh, we talked about the Rob Pinnell going to the Redwoods trade. I feel like a couple episodes ago. The biggest one is Paul Rabel. Nines. Number 99 on episode 99 of Dave's Diary. Don't you love it when stuff just works out like this? Episode 99, we're announcing that number 99, Nines is his nickname, Paul Rabel, co-founder of the Premier Lacrosse League himself, has been traded. He's been traded 
from the Atlas to the Cannons, which the Cannons are going to be the new team, the eighth team in the PLL, and they're going to have an entry draft. So we actually don't even know who he's going to be playing with yet, but they're going to swap picks number six and nine in that entry draft. So that goes along with the protected rosters that were made. The protected rosters, uh, we saw it, you know, with the, like the, with the Vegas Knights and the NHL and the Premier Lacrosse League's done it already too. Everybody gets X amount of players they can protect, and then the new team gets to choose from anybody that's not protected, and, and, and we'll go through, go through a draft that way. Um, then they also have the college draft, so Atlas also going to get the number eight pick in the 2021 draft, and then a first-round pick in the 2022 draft. So the Cannons get Rabel and a swap pick, and then they send over two first-rounders in the college draft. So co-founder of the league. Being traded, that's pretty. That's pretty big, pretty big news. So, um, it's cool too because he, he used to play for the Cannons in the Major League Lacrosse. So if you don't, if you, I mean, if you're a lacrosse fan, you know that uh, we won championships there in Boston with the Boston Cannons. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. He's going back to the, the red, white, and blue Cannons. I think they still have to announce their, what the uniforms and stuff are going to look like, but the logos and everything, it all looks good so far. So. Rabel on the cannons. That's your news. Nines on episode 99. I just, you, you love that. And Ryan Brown also traded. Atlas just getting all, doing the trades, man. They're doing a little rebuilding here, I guess. Or I don't know what, how, what you call it. But also trading Ryan Brown to the Water Dogs for the 11th pick. So, and then I think I mentioned it on, a, on another episode, but I didn't know if I have for sure. I just wanted to mention the Chris Hogan news. Uh, if you don't know Chris Hogan, why Ex wide receiver in the NFL moving over to the Premier Lacrosse League now. That's huge for the sport. That's um, I mean Chris Hogan has more followers on Twitter and Instagram than Paul Rabel, and that's like the co-founder of the league, most popular lacrosse player there is. I mean, arguably. And uh, Chris Brown's like or Chris Chris Brown Chris Hogan's just on another level. I mean, so that's good. And that's how you get more fans. I mean, that's. That's cool. <laughs> um, bang, bang. All right. We're kind of cruising along. This is good because I got to go to work today. But we'll get to some uh, shooty hoops, some college basketball news after this uh, commercial break. <laughs> All right, and we're back. <laughs> oh, man, sorry. I make myself laugh. Hopefully, I make you guys laugh, too. All right. So, I kind of mentioned a little bit on, on college basketball here already, but we sleep in May. It's finally March. We got the regular season actually ends this week already. Then we're going to have the champ week. We're going to have all the conference tournaments. Some of them already started. The 8-10 tournament's already going. So, we'll get some conference champions and... The bubble will burst for a lot of your favorite teams, or maybe you'll get into the field. It's We're coming down here to the wire now, people. It's getting real. Like, it's it's March. It's March, baby. So, and we just had what could be the game of the year. One of, for sure. Uh, Baylor, West Virginia. Huge. Top 10 matchup. What was it? A top 6 matchup for the AP poll. Number 3 versus number 6. I cheated out mid, like before it went into overtime. I was like, top 6 matchup. What's, what's the gif? Oh, you're not entertained. Like that. That It was it was a battle, man. Two really good teams. I've always, I've said, I mean, I'm on record. It, I thought West Virginia, I've been high on them all year, man. And, I mean, even last year before the season got canceled. I think a lot of people forget that they were, you know, they were in that top 16 that the committee released, remember? And then they went on that little slide. But West Virginia, two years in a row, has been one of the best teams in college basketball. And I, I still believe that's true. Um, they're not just, sometimes you get teams in the top 10 because they're just, you know, they've been on winning streaks or, you know, their record is just better. Or they got lucky and not got lucky, but want to get, like, West Virginia is a, a legitimate top 10, top 8, 1 or 2 seed team. West Virginia has, if you're a 1 or 2 seed, you have a chance to go all the way. And, and West Virginia does. Hall of Fame head coach, 
Bobby Huggy. I hope you get in the Hall of Fame soon. Um, and Baylor and West Virginia. I mean, and they're, they essentially, they reminded me of great teams and great coaches can pull this off. And actually, we'll, we're going to talk about another one that's a sad injury here in a minute. But great teams and great coaches can lose one of their best players and get better. It, it's crazy it happened. Baylor did it a few years ago. Justin Clark went out. I don't think anybody expected them to get better, but sometimes you can just kind of meld and morph into something different. And it's not its not a, anything against the other players that leave or get hurt. or But West Virginia, they, they I don't necessarily know if they got better, but I think I had dropped them in the rankings. I was like, well, they're not going to be as good as that Oscar Schwebe, and they're just as good, if not better. They just didn't skip a beat, so... West Virginia is still in the hunt. Not in the hunt for the Big 12 Championship, but they're in the hunt for the for the whole shebang. And, um, you know, I, so I guess we'll, we'll talk about the Villanova news here. Um, this is tough. It's uh, Colin Gillespie now tore his MCL, if you haven't heard. Colin Gillespie was one of the best point guards in all of college basketball this year. Now out indefinitely for the rest of the season with the torn MCL. That's devastating for Villanova fans, for college basketball fans. Villanova was a preseason top five team. They've been essentially in the top 14, I think, all year. I can't I can't remember a time when I dropped them out. I think they've been, honestly, top five most of the season. Um... Villanova was one of those teams, I, I almost feel like they were going under the radar because of the COVID pauses. Some of their big marquee games got canceled. One was actually against Baylor very early in the season. If not, that was, I think, going to be opening weekend. Um, so they were, you know, kind of like sleeping at the top, and that's scary because Villanova's <laughs> been one of the best programs in college basketball the last few years. So now we'll see. I don't know. I... They're a hard team to rank now. It's, and I think it's even going to be tougher for the committee. Do you go by resume when you seed them, or do you go by what they are now without Gillespie? It's almost unfair to still have them as like a two seed without him if they end up being not as good. So I don't know. That's a, this is going to be a tricky situation what they do there. Um, in my top 14, I, I dropped them 10 spots. I was like, I think that's just like, you almost wanna, wanted to drop them like into the 20s, but I couldn't see myself doing that without them playing a game and losing. I mean, because they, they, they still won that game against a good Creighton team, uh, the game he went out. So they haven't lost. So I think I have them at 14 now. They were at four. I had them really high because they have very few losses on the season. So Villanova is a tricky one. Uh, we'll see what the AP voters do with them. We'll see when they get another game in, how they play. Uh, I heard during a halftime show last night, you know, like I was mentioning, some teams can get better or stay the same when you lose a, a, a marquee player like that. But... Um, this time of the year, it's tough. That's something you not want to happen. But if it does happen in December, we can still work through it. When it happens on March 4th or 3rd, it's not good. Um, so we'll see, though. And if it's anybody can pull off <laughs> something crazy, it'll be Jay Wright at, at Villanova. So we'll see. I don't know. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting news. Villanova. Um and worth, I think, that amount of time on it because that'll be something. <laughs> That's certainly going to affect brackets for sure. So, um, I have this Kansas news I just thought was crazy. Kansas has won 19 games, 38 consecutive seasons, 19 plus games. Usually 20 is the benchmark, so I don't know why it's 19, but. 
I feel like when you get to a 20-win season, like that's a big deal. There's a, there's only a few 20-win teams this year already, and they're good. They're all good. <laughs> if you make it to 20 wins, you're good. So there's 19. But here's the crazy part. So they've won 19 games, 38 seasons in a row, at least 19 games, 19 games or more. The next best streak is Duke at 24. And they're not good. They can't. I don't think they even can get to. I mean, I guess they would have to win the national championship to get to 19. We'd have to see. They'd have to run to the ACC tournament and run through the. Because they're they're 11 and 10, at last check. So, that streak's gonna break. And who knows what the next next one is. 38 in a row, and the next best is 24, and they're gonna snap it this year. 30 30. Eight seasons in a row? 38! So there's like... There's almost 40-year-olds out there that can't remember the last time Kansas was not good at basketball. Like, like, good, like really good. 19 wins in a season? They've always been very, very good. For 38 years. And Baylor loses to Kansas, and everybody's like, oh, uh, they're sliding Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Everybody loses at Kansas. Come on. What are you doing? So, there's that. <laughs> uh, and then another thing, too, with college basketball, it's just there, there actually was just so much going on that last week that... Here's just, I have like a little rundown of how many teams in the AP top 25 lost last week. These are all teams that lost in the top 25. Baylor was number two and they lost. Ohio State was number four. They lost twice. Illinois lost. Alabama, Oklahoma, twice. Villanova, Iowa, Florida State, Creighton, Texas, UVA, Virginia Tech, Kansas, Texas Tech, USC lost twice, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Tennessee. Almost the entire top 25 lost last week. That's how crazy last week was. And ranking these teams after all that, not easy. You know, it is easy commenting on Twitter, these rankings suck. <laughs> That's very easy. Ranking teams every week, not as easy as it looks. But I make it look easy because, you know, I just don't have to shift teams as much as the AP poll. I kept, not kept, I had, well, I guess that's not true. I'm trying to be funny and brag about myself and it's not even true. Because I had Baylor at one. I thought I had him at two the whole time and just left him at two. But actually I had him at one and dropped him to two. You all, you've heard the reasons if you, if you follow me closely. Uh, two undefeated teams. I hadn't lost yet, so I was like, I'm not going to drop one until one loses. Baylor finally lost, so they're 20 and 1. Gonzaga's perfect, 24 and 0. So Gonzaga's number one. Baylor's number two. The AP poll, and essentially everybody, almost every poll and ranking, dropped Baylor to three. I didn't. I had Michigan three still, which I think is still very good. Um, I'm surprised Michigan fans didn't come after me. They didn't see it, thank goodness. But two one-loss teams, and the argument I get, Baylor's loss is more recent, but I think Baylor's loss was not as bad of a loss. If that right? Do we Are we all following on that mindset? So it was two one-loss teams for the two and three spots. I'm going overall resume. One, I had the team higher. I'm, again, like I, I, I try not to jump teams. We've talked about this before, unless there's a reason to. Yes, there was one loss, but Michigan already had a loss. I think it was a worse loss. So, very close, obviously. I think you, like, you can make the argument. But I don't think it should have been such a landslide that everybody just had Michigan number two. I think it should have been a little bit more of a debate. And people should look at the resumes and not just, oh, they lost this week. I, people, I think people just need to put a little more thought into it than just look at the final score and, and see a loss. That's what I try to do. So now Michigan, though, lost again. So now they're 19-2. and two, So I have them at three uh, for obvious reasons. Florida State, four. 
They only have four losses. We all know I've been hot on Florida State. West Virginia, five now. Went up a spot because I dropped Villanova. Villanova only had four losses in the season, so I had them very high. I had them at five. Now they're at 15, like I mentioned. Got a 10 point. 10 point? I, get, I, I don't know. Dropped them 10 spots because of the injury news. Um... Illinois actually made a little has made a little jump up to six. I mean, if I had them at eight, I jumped them above Arkansas and Alabama. I just said I usually don't do that, but they beat Michigan. So when you beat a top three team, I think it warrants a, a little bump above the other guys um, who have, have who have lost recently. Arkansas really hasn't, but Alabama did lose recently. So um, so that's your top eight. Houston's nine. And then I think there's a little bit of a cliff. It's like you have Gonzaga, Baylor, and Michigan all with 0-1 and two losses. Florida State with four. And it's like those are clearly they have the least losses and I think have all been playing fantastically this year. Then there's like a drop-off of just you go from a four-loss team to everybody has five, six, or seven, or eight. It's like it's a huge cliff there. West Virginia has seven. I mean, Illinois has six. Arkansas has five. Alabama has six. Houston's at three, but <clears throat> that's because their schedule's a little easier. Um, so it's just tough to, like, we were talking about the top eight teams. I mean, those are going to be your one and two seeds. And they have six and seven losses already? And inevitably, they're all going to have one more. There's only one person who can win each conference championship. So either Michigan or Illinois is going to have at least one more loss. Best case scenario. Um. Arkansas and Alabama, they're going to have to beat each other. Baylor or West Virginia, someone's going to have to lose. I mean, those are all in your top eight. So Florida State's just got to win out. I, I'm going to argue Florida State has a chance at a one seed. I haven't heard anyone else. Actually, they were talking about this on the Ion College Basketball Podcast. They didn't even mention Florida State as a possibility for a one seed. I don't see how. If they win out and win the ACC, I get the ACC's down this year. If they only have four losses... I don't see how you don't put them in the number four spot over a seven loss, eight loss Illinois team. I mean, best case, Illinois will have six losses if they go if they win out. And that'll be crazy if they win out. So um yeah, so like I said, then after the nine spot, I think there's like a little drop off. You have I and it's not really that big of a drop off. Iowa is still, you know, we always talk about one of the best offenses. They're actually starting to defend well. So I actually have Iowa in the top ten again now. Ohio State, Virginia, Oklahoma State's climbing. I mean, I've had them high all, all year. Now they're all the way up to 13, Oklahoma State. Um, and that's despite just losing to Baylor. But, hey, everybody loses to Baylor. So we can't punish them too much for that. Um, Kansas, again, climbing in the top 14. There's Villanova. I mentioned the, the, the drop for them. Then Louisville and Oregon, both sitting there with five losses. I'm high on them. I think everybody thinks that the ACC and Pac-12 are down this year, which is arguably true, but to only have five losses, and they're beating quality teams at least. They're, they're looking good. Creighton, still at 18. Texas and Tennessee, they are teams that have dropped to 19 and 20. They've been in the top 10, top 14 all year, sliding at the wrong time, but we'll see. Still so much potential for both of them. Texas Tech, same boat. Colorado's climbing. They're looking good in the Pac-12. Loyola, Chicago. I think people can argue that they're better than the team that made the Final Four. So they're going to be a sleeper pick. They only have four losses. Virginia Tech's looking good. USC's kind of sliding. Oklahoma's a little sliding. UCLA has lost a couple. LSU's lost a few. Clemson finally lost. Clemson have had ranked too high, I mentioned, because COVID pauses. They've just barely played. They've only played 20 games. So they're a team that kind of fell. They're at 29 now. The Aztecs, SDSU's looking good at 30. BYU holding in there. Georgia Tech's, I think, a little bit of a sleeper. They have eight losses, but they're, they're beating some teams. Everybody's sleeping on the ACC. I don't think they're – and they're not as good as normal, but I don't think they're terrible, if that makes sense. It's just different teams. It's just Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech are good instead of North Carolina and Duke. So I don't really actually necessarily think that they're – as down as people would say, as it's just different teams are 
at the top. It's just we assume that they're bad because you just Duke and North Carolina are bad. That's not Georgia Tech's fault that Duke can get, like, they can still be good. Virginia Tech can still be a good team just because Duke and North Carolina aren't. For once, it's like, finally, like, <laughs> like go, please, like, win a bunch of games because you're not getting, like, you don't get this chance when Duke and North Carolina are not good very often. So, Wichita State's only four losses. St. Louis still up there. UConn, Florida final, lost finally. I, I make it sound like it's a good thing, but they they have dropping a little. Xavier's hanging in there. Another team that doesn't have many losses, only five, but for some reason they're not hot on any of the metrics. Arizona finally a nine loss team. I almost dropped them out of the top forty. They're at thirty eight now. They could you could argue that they should fall out. Um, they might still. Uh, Colorado State jumped into the top 40 for the first time this year in my top 40. Colorado State, only four losses. So watch out for them. And then Purdue finally jumped in at the 40 spot instead of Wisconsin. Sorry, Brad, but Wisconsin just dropping out again, a 10-loss team. I mean, I have Wisconsin way lower than all the metrics. I mean, they're a top 25 team in almost everything else. And I keep putting them in the top 40. They get up to, like, 35. They climb because everybody else is losing. And then they lose. Eight losses. Then they drop out or hit number 40 then they win a couple then they dropped out to 41 then they like 10 losses i can't have a 10 loss team in the top 40 they're still on a high ceiling we all keep like you keep making that argument the metrics love them they're a top 20 team but 10 losses and purdue's like the same way purdue's done this the last couple of years wisconsin's the new purdue and purdue's still being purdue so Teams that I'm, I'm, I'm close to and metrics like are Carolina and Duke finding themselves in the national conversation again because we're going to end the year, the regular season, nicely with the rivalry, best rivalry in almost all of sports, you could argue. Duke Carolina is this Saturday. And the game matters somehow. Somehow Duke and North Carolina both have over nine losses on the season and yet somehow Duke North Carolina still wins because it's essentially a knockout game. Whoever loses is is essentially out of out of the March Madness tournament. They would have to win the ACC tournament to to get in, because then obviously they'd automatically get in. But Duke and North Carolina, yeah, like if you don't win this one, their resume is just they just won't have enough. They'll they'll be out for sure. So it's like a it's like a winner go home. Duke North Carolina Saturday, even though they're both not as good as normal, it's like it's gonna move the needle for sure. Um, so that's exciting because it's like, you, it's something different if, if we don't have all these Michigan State, Duke and North Carolina all in the tournament, but it's like almost going to be a little refreshing, but you almost want them in because the, the casual fan pays attention when, when they're good. So, um, Drake lost another game. So we'll see if they, if they can, uh, if their resume will be enough or if they have to win their, their conference tournament. Colgate is like number three or uh, 10 <clears throat> in the net in other rankings. But they've only played like 12 games. So I don't know how much we put into that. That's going to be interesting to see what the committee does come selection Sunday if they don't lose so up to that point. Rutgers, Missouri have dropped out. Wright State, here's some small mid-major teams for people that want some love for their teams. Wright State, Belmont, St. Bonnie's, VCU, all close. They're on the bubble. Bubble watch is real for them. That's kind of a that, that's just like a rundown of of the top forty instead of like going through all of the games that happened last week because I mentioned I mean just all of the top twenty five teams that lost I listed them all so um yeah a little a little preview for we got a big saturday again i mean wednesday and thursday this week were terrific i mentioned the, the baylor west virginia game was fantastic the michigan illinois game was just surprising another top five matchup that illinois crushed michigan without io that's that the, the way they did it is is crazy usually a, a two versus a four you really can't have that surprising of an outcome but this one was. <laughs> that, I mean, Michigan had people were arguing they were the best team in the country for good reason. And then they just got smacked by a team that didn't have their best player. So, wild. 
Uh, top 25 matchups to look for Saturday. You got Oklahoma State and West Virginia. That'll be a good one. That one's in Morgantown. That's a good game, man. I was going to do picks, but I don't even want to. Uh, Indiana, Purdue. That could be interesting. Villanova is going to play Providence, so we'll see how Villanova reacts without Colin Gillespie. I hope they can still be good, but like I mentioned, losing a top five point guard in the country to your team in March, that's devastating. So hopefully they can bounce back strong, but we'll see how they play. Uh, top 10 matchup, Illinois versus Ohio State. That'll be a good one. We'll see what Illinois team shows up. Like I've mentioned, they uh, very hit or miss. Um, but looking good at the, at the right time. Ohio State, too. One of the top, top 10 team. Creighton's playing Butler. See if they can get past Butler. Butler somehow just beating really good teams, but has 13 losses, so I don't know what they're doing. Virginia, Louisville. That'll be a good one. We all know I'm high on Louisville this year. Virginia is just doing Virginia things, but at a lesser level this year. Uh, and then the must bus at home against against the Aggies, Arkansas. I'm hot on Arkansas, baby. Let's keep the must bus rolling. Um, love love the must bus. And I think there were a couple big games Sunday, which is a little more rare. The Big Ten plays on Sunday, but the Big 12 usually doesn't. Yeah, we have Baylor and Texas Tech on Sunday. That would be a good one. Texas Tech sliding. They're just losing to good teams. So, like, they're another awkward one. They have a lot of losses, but still a great team in the metrics. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, they have eight losses already. So, but the metrics still like them, the predictive ones. I, and I do, too. I mean, they're a they top 14 team all year, and now they're 18 and eight people. So, we'll see. Houston against Memphis. Sorry, I'm like dying over here. Um, Iowa, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's just like a Purdue, like I mentioned. I mean, they're going to have 10 losses, and then they'll go and beat a top five team like Iowa. So who knows what will happen there. Michigan, Michigan State on Sunday. And then Texas, TCU. We'll see if Texas can, can stop their slide. So... And that's pretty much the end of the regular season. Then we got Champ Week coming up, all the conference tournaments. So we'll definitely do an episode soon on that. I don't know. That's really all I got. Yeah, 40 minutes. Cool. Wanted to keep it under an hour. Um, let's do a shot to end the show. Dang. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Alrighty, that'll do it. Episode 99, big episode 100 next week. I'm going to say I have big things planned for episode 100, but I don't know if they'll go through. So I don't want to tease tease anything I can't I can't keep can't keep my promise. So, alrighty, that was an episode We Sleep in May, if you're watching on YouTube. Appreciate you. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, everybody. Hope you learned something. I'm trying to do a brief rundown here of all the madness going on. Uh, we'll obviously dive in more because it's it's time, baby. Alrighty, that'll do it. Episode ninety nine. Shout out to number ninety nine nines. Good luck on the cannons, and that'll be an episode. That'll do it for us here. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.